All right, debut take two. Here we go. We're recording again. More stream. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the Sega Genesis version of it wasn't anywhere near as hard as uh, the NES version was. It wasn't easy, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't, you know, sadistically hard like the NES version was. Pretty much every single Battletoads game in the series was ridiculously hard. Yes, the arcade version was very difficult. You know, lots of quarters, yeah, that, but even still, man, that was just ridiculous. The NES version, though, you had, what, three continues between player one and player two? Friendly fire you couldn't turn off, and so many ways to instantly die. Yeah, it, it was just... Mm. I mean, granted, you know, Gallif, if you really want to, Battletoads has a nice level, too. The fourth level. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, I could even go find you the Game Genie code, which is start right there if you want. But trust me, you don't no, want to. thank you. <laughs> you don't want to do it. I went through the first three stages in one video because I'd had so much practice with them. And then I took me, like, three videos to go through the next two. Wow. So basically the guy was like, I hate you because you aren't as good at me as a game. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, the Battletoad gods, you know, they're great at it. Don't get me wrong. You know, go watch their stuff. I mean, they really are good at it. But, you know, they're kind of full of themselves because of it. That's all. It's just weird. It's like, like it really matters that much. You know, the stuff I do is crap. I'll be the first one to tell you that. You know, throw a rock, you'll hit a better LP -er than me. I mean, look at Gallif. You know, I, I use save states all the time. I cheat all the time because I don't take it that seriously. It's just supposed to be fun for me. You know, people who say, you know, we do it this way and we're so good at it. You know, they're taking things way too seriously. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's, 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 yeah. I do what I do because it's fun. When it stops being fun, I'll, you know, play something else and try to make that fun. You know, I, I don't do it what I do for the audience. I do it because it's fun for me. And that should be the only reason why any of us ever do it at all, is because it's fun. It should never be a job. Never. Ah, uh, and the mist is going to fall. Not, I just called you a mist, Gallif, I'm sorry. I <laughs> said, so Gallif is going to fall into the snow, and he didn't fall in the snow. Well, yeah, there's, there's nothing, I mean, losing interest is nothing. I mean, you guys have any idea how long it's going to take me to actually get through the Final Fantasy series? When I when I finish Final Fantasy 2, I'll probably be taking a break and moving on to something else before I do 3. Not just because I want to take a break from it, but I also want to find a decent version. I think I'm going to have to try and do the DS version of it. Oh, I imagine it'll take me pretty much the better part of the year of 2011 to get it all done. I plan on getting a new comp sometime when I get my tax returns, so uh, hopefully I'll be actually be able to do, um, I might actually be able to fit 10, 11, and 12 in. So don't count on it, but I'd like to just to say I could, just so I could say I did them. Maybe do 10 too, and I know you'd all be looking forward to that. I'd like to do the Grand Theft Auto series because I've been wanting to do that forever. I'd like to do Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, which Hyper's done, um, and Kingdom Hearts 2. Yes, I do have 12. I've been through it once, and it was just wasn't good. It it was a hard slog. I probably won't even bother with it. I'll do 10, maybe even 10 too, but mm, the Final Fantasy series just hasn't really been that kind of interesting for me. I mean, Final Fantasy 7, everybody thought it was so epic, but it just hasn't aged well at all in the last 13 years. Twelve isn't a bad game. It's just, it's really hard to follow. It's really hard to get into because you know they're using lots of English-accented people. You know, Final Fantasy characters are always really whiny. You know, they always have weird hair. You know, the the male lead characters are always kind of effeminate-looking. You know, it's just, mm. I don't know about Gallif, but I just, I just did not like it at all. Final Fantasy Twelve. There were some things about it I did I like. I wasn't a big fan of it. 
there were things I did like the license thing where you actually had to get a license to use any weapon or armor that you found. I actually liked that idea. I thought that was kind of interesting, but mm, it just it just wasn't fun, and that's a big thing for me. Uh, zero four now. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'd say um, Yuna and Titus. I'd I'd say it's kind of divided between the two of them. Uh, as far as the main characters from 10. When I first did 10, I, I flew through it and uh, didn't prepare at all. So when I actually got to the end, I was having so much trouble, I could not finish Braska's final Aeon to save my life. Because I just... That happened to me when I played 10 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 10 2, the thing with Vegna Gun is just... Mm. Well, 10-2, you have three playable characters, and that's it. You have Yuna, you have Riku, you have Pain. They're all accessible from the beginning, and, you know, that's all you get. You know, you see Kamari, you see Waka, you see Lulu, but none of them, you know, can spare, you know, however much time it takes to join their, join your reindeer games. And if you do it right, you can see Titus by the end of the game. Well, Final Fantasy X is just, you know, it's tougher than what I was used to with Final Fantasy VII, VIII, IX, which were kind of easy. X actually required some strategy. X-2... X-2, I don't know what Square Enix was thinking when they did X-2. I mean, it's just, it's just a weird game. I wonder if X-2 is actually not very hard, because I needed strategy to beat it, but... I always went from point A to point B and didn't do any of the optional stuff, which I later found out was like more than half of the game is optional stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You could probably do maybe 25 to 30 percent of it, I think. Well, maybe a little more than that, you know, because the main story missions is all you actually have to do. There's a lot of stuff that you, you know, are optional stuff because the game is divided into five chapters, and you can visit everything in Spira and do something in each one of those five chapters and you know that goes to your 100 percent completion but it's just weird it's it's everything is mission based you know it's, it's just mm. I do like the whole dress sphere thing and the garment grids and whatnot but um, yeah it just wasn't a good game 11 I've never even bothered with you know it's an MMO that's kinda dumb Final Fantasy just doesn't seem to fit well into that sort of thing uh, and Final Fantasy 12 is just uh, just a hard slog. Well, you're not missing much, Dragar. I mean, if you can't play it, you can't play it, but I would say if I had to pick a favorite from the series, I'd be hard-pressed to do it. I, I, I really wouldn't be able to pick a favorite. Final Fantasy 2 is tough. Final Fantasy 3 is meh. Final Fantasy IV, I've played a million times. Final Fantasy V, I've never finished. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how that works. Final Fantasy VI, I've played a million times. Final Fantasy VII, played a million times. Eight million times. Nine a million times. I'm kind of a Final Fantasy connoisseur at this point. On my 18th birthday, I actually got a PlayStation specifically so I could play Final Fantasy VII. That's back when Young and Gallif here was uh, six years old, I believe. And yet, I was playing games too. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm an old man when it comes to that sort of thing. Yeah, I was I was 18 in 1997. I just graduated high school, just turned 18 in that in December of that year, and got a PlayStation just so I could play Final Fantasy VII. I hear the PC versions for that were better than the console versions. I don't doubt it. I mean, the PlayStation versions just didn't look very good. I mean, that'd be the way to do it, you know, play for the PC. Hmm. I, I wouldn't know, I never played them for the PC. Um, I, I, knew that, I know that they uh, made a Magic the Gathering game for the PC, which I never really understood. 
playing a card game on a computer. Weird. So, are there any, like, real differences between 1-0 and the next? Slight differences. They but they're pretty... They're probably more similar than even, like, some of... Like, with the other series, is when you would jump from one game to the next. Right. I was just kind of curious, because it seems like, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. Not that that's a problem. It's the same graphics. Yeah, it's not that that's the same... That's not really a problem, because, you know, it's Mega Man. You know, you expect that. Uh, Final Fantasy. I've played it on the console about a million times, but when we first got it, uh, this guy I knew named Aaron, he uh, he, had, he had a copy of it. And uh, once you got past the strategy guide, the strategy guide only carried you halfway through the game uh, to the airship, and after that you were pretty much on your own. You're talking Final Fantasy VII. Oh, yeah, I, I flew through that. Those of you who've actually watched my LP of it, you know, you've heard me talk about how fast I flew through it the first time I played it. Because I just wanted to get through it so fast. And I did. To the point where I was not prepared for the final boss at all. That's a bad thing. Really bad thing to do that in the Final Fantasy game. <laughs> yeah. You want to prepare for the final boss. I, I often didn't, and I always had a crap load of trouble because of that with all the Final Fantasies I played until a certain point. Yeah. Until I finally just oh, stopped, stopped running from battles and started fighting them all, and lo and behold, I was prepared for everything. Yeah, I, I wasn't prepared for Zero Miss, I wasn't prepared for Sephiroth, or Ultimecia, or Necron. I don't know what it is about Final Fantasy Final Bosses that they always want to take forever and a day to die. They always gotta shake and disappear into a portal, and yeah. it's, it's just strange. Because uh, Chaos does it at the end of the first one. Uh, the Emperor does it at the end of Final Fantasy II. The the Cloud thing does it at the end of Final Fantasy III. Zeromus does it at the end of Final Fantasy IV. X Death, uh, Neo X Death does it at the end of Final Fantasy V, and so on and so on and so on. I just never understood it. It's almost like a cliche now. That's where, uh, by the way, Final Fantasy V is where Galif got his name, just so you know. Yep. There actually is a character in Final Fantasy V called Galif. He isn't necessarily a black mage, unless, of course, you decide to make him that, but that's another story. I think I know what I did. I, I think um, I've got a power saver thing on in my system right now where you don't touch anything for 15 minutes it goes to sleep. It turns off the monitor. Oh. That probably was what it was. I think it just overloaded everything. But that's okay. The Demon Wall, the Temple of the Ancients, is that what it was? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I just started fighting all the battles and just not running from anything. and Before you knew it, I was like, 12 levels ahead of where I was last time I was there. So I did pretty well for myself. Awesome. Do, 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 do. Well, I gotta say, I'm appreciating the ease of this stage, because I haven't practiced this one at all, and yet I'm not having any trouble. Yeah. Well, honestly, um, the, way I, the way I did it, uh, I just you know leveled up to the point where I had um, Cloud have the nail bat, and Cloud pretty much took down the Ruby Dragon by himself and like around. And we didn't really seem to have much trouble with the Demon Wall either. I don't remember though. It's kind of a blur, Final Fantasy VII. I did it so fast. Played the entire game over like a course of like two or three weeks. Yeah, but it's it's up on my channel, so I suppose I gotta look at it. Forever? Oh, forever. I tried forever. Okay. Yeah, my throat's a little dry. I've been yakking so much. So I got, got a beverage here. Much better. Much better. My throat's been dry all day. Okay, so. Yeah, Final Fantasy gonna take me forever. 
Galif actually got to be a black mage over the course of Final Fantasy. I'm sure he appreciates that. Because the last time I actually played through, he was actually supposed to be a red mage. In the, uh, Those are cool too, though. The NES hack thing that I was doing. Yeah, I when I first got the game, uh, there's this dude I was working with. Um, his name is uh, Chris. And uh, he was playing Final Fantasy VII, but never bothered to get a memory card for the PlayStation. Which kind of makes you question why he was even bothering. It's just kind of silly to play a, a long game like that without the capacity to save it, when you have to start over every freaking time. Unless you want to, of course, keep your console running all the time. Which is something that uh, another guy I knew used to do. Uh, he would uh, keep Grand Theft Auto 3 running all the time. Eventually wore out the laser on his uh, PlayStation, so at the point where it wouldn't read any of his discs anymore. You want to hear a you want to hear a strange fix for that? Something I actually found that works. Take some uh, inch pieces of Scotch tape and place them on the label of your disc, right around the center hole in a square. That works. It that'll actually make the laser read your disc if you do it that way. Huh? Isn't that retarded? Yeah. Weird. Because my PlayStation 2 has the same problem. It won't read uh, unless it won't read the the discs that are purple or blue on the bottom. So you just put uh, some pieces of scotch tape around the center hole in like a little square, and you just plug it in, and it plays it just fine. I thought that was the craziest thing. It's one of the few things I've actually tried on the I've heard about on the internet that I actually tried and worked. You know, it, it exceeded my expectations remarkably so. So yeah, that actually works. Scotch tape on your PlayStation discs. You wouldn't think it would, but it does. It's it's weird. Yeah, I can personally vouch for that that it works. It's it's insane, but it does work. That's how I actually got to play some of my games that you know just wouldn't load for the life of me. All right, so uh, where are we now, Galif? I'm sorry, I'm losing track of which one you're playing. Mega Man Zero Four. And you are in. Uh, What's the name of this guy? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I couldn't remember either. Been so many of them. So yeah, it's a wolf. Yep. Gallif. Gallif blue wolf. Yeah, I've heard things about toothpaste getting rid of scratches. Um, I, I, I'm almost anal about taking care of my uh, discs to the point where they don't get scratched. You know, I'm, I hate that when my CDs get scratched. So I go out of my way to ensure that doesn't happen at all. Fenrir Luna Edge, apparently. Awesome. He's, he's beating you pretty badly, though. There we go. Gotta love Mega Man. There are so many different Mega Man titles to play, too. I know. There's Mega Man Zero. There's like five or four or five of them. Uh, there's like six. Four of them. Yeah, there's like six Battle Network games. Uh, there's eight of the Mega Man X titles. There's ten of the main series. There were five Mega Man games made for the Game Boy. Um, there's Mega Man Soccer. Mega Man Powered Up we talked about earlier. Um, so many Mega Man games. I mean, if we really wanted to run Mega Man into the ground, we could. There are so many Mega Man games. Mega Man Soccer, Mega Man Base, 1 and 2. Yeah, yeah. Mega Man Power Fighters, Mega Man Power Fighters 2. Um, let me see here. Um, Another series that I'd actually, you know, like to try, but I never really could get into, were the Sonic the Hedgehog games. Since Traeger just brought up Sonic Advance, Sonic, I, 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 is he at like where I am on the stream? Because I just started playing it. Yeah, you just started it up, right? I'm actually in the stage. Uh, 
you fall a little behind after you're all yeah. watching it for a while. Yeah, because it's um. Yeah, the video. I'm I'm not even paying attention to the video right now. But yeah, Sonic Advance. You know, you guys can see. That's all that matters, right? Yeah, I I never really got into the Sonic the Hedgehog games. Sonic was always really squirrely to me. Really hard to control. And the emphasis of the game was so much on speed. So much on speed that everything else took a back seat to it, it seemed. I mean, granted, the, the, the games looked phenomenal, you know, for the time. But you could never slow down long enough to actually, you know, look at them. You know, you had to just keep right on going the whole time. I mean, case in point. Look at that background. You can't because you have to keep running the whole damn time. I mean, it's just, it's just too bad, you know. You have to focus on just getting through the stages as fast as you can instead of, you know, stopping to enjoy yourself. Just never really cared for it. Well, my problem with with Sonic was he was. There was almost like um, like when you would uh, stop pressing the control pad to move him, you know, he wouldn't stop right away. He would just sort of gradually slow from his run to a stop. And um, you know, he was really touchy on his controls. You know, he would um, just start running like the second you so much as goosed your control pad. You know, it was just, nah. I'm not trying to say the Sonic games were bad by any stretch of the imagination, but they just never really appealed to me. And Sonic 2 and Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles and Sonic Spinball, and they just never offered enough, you know, to keep me interested. Although Sonic Spinball was kind of an interesting idea, though, I have to say. Playing pinball, that's awesome. I don't think they have a snow level in that one, though, so... Don't count on Galf playing that one. <laughs> don't count on me playing anything I have to emulate, really. Because my setup for the console streaming works better. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, Sonic Spinball... I kind of like the idea of Sonic being a pinball game, but... Mm, yeah, the Sonic game just never really appealed to me. I also never really liked the idea of getting all of those rings. You get hit once, you lose them all. Then you get hit once again. If you have no rings, you die. You know, that, that bothered me just a little bit. Something about that just didn't sit right with me. Yeah. I mean, I guess Sonic is really an acquired taste. You either like it or you don't. People used to swear by the Sonic games when uh, Super Nintendo, or rather when the Sega Genesis came out before the Super Nintendo was, because the Sega Genesis was so advanced as opposed to the, the regular NES. That's why uh, a lot of people don't even know that uh, Sega had an 8-bit system out called the Master System, which couldn't even touch the NES as far as market share, which is why they made the Genesis. You know, actually have a system that would compete with it. It was an advanced system. It just tore the NES up. That's why the Super NES got released. And the Super NES was more advanced than the Sega Genesis. Those are the real console wars, man, back from the early 90s. Wow. They were the two big players in town. Yep. Now look at Gallup. He's just running over everybody. Awesome. I would not be a very good public speaker, would I? <laughs> Better than I. Yeah, so I'm just trying to fill the silence just by talking about whatever. Mario... Mario's okay. Because, you know, I grew up with the NES and not the Sega. I'm sure it'd be different if I grew up with the Sega instead, but... I I would rather, you know, just find a game or two that, you know, strikes my fancy, regardless of what console it's for, and then just say, hey, you know, I like this for this console, and then 
you know, rather than say that you know this is the ultimate console because it has this, and you know, everything aside from that, you know, just sucks. Yeah, that's right. Because that's what everybody said, you know, when the NES came out, you know, you either liked Nintendo or you liked Sega, you know, very few people liked both. One was great, the other sucked. Yeah, isn't that... That still happens now, too. Oh, yeah. Xbox 360 and PlayStation, yeah. Find a game you like and play it and be happy. Exactly. Words of wisdom. You know, but see, people didn't do that. I love it. People didn't do that back in the old days. They don't do that now. Yes, Sega does what Nintendo don't. And then Nintendo started doing what Sega did, and they actually did it a little better. But, you know, Sega had a head start on Nintendo by a good year and a half, I think. And they had Sega, they had Sonic out, they had like two or three Sonics out. You know, they had a 16-bit system when Nintendo only had an 8-bit system. You know, they were, the, you know, really the first big threat to Nintendo. But Nintendo hasn't really been anything like it was, you know, because the Nintendo 64, there were so many delays for that. The GameCube didn't do as well as the PlayStation and the Xbox did, you know, and the Wii, I mean, hey, just because the Wii was cheap and it had the novelty with that motion control and all that stuff, but I think that's what that was. Not that it had great games, but just that it was um, cheaper than what the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 were, simply because those if they were actually priced so that the, they could profit off of those things, they, they, the systems would actually have to cost about 700 or 800 dollars just because of all that crap they put in them. Yeah, but I think I think there's a little bit. More, I think the novelty for the, that controller kind of worked in there too. I think Nintendo's you know always focused on the average gamer. You know, I mean I don't really think that they've really gone out of their way to market to the hardcore gamer. I think they really seem almost prejudiced against the hardcore gamers. I mean, I mean you've really got to like Mario and the gang if you're going to play Nintendo systems. Like Mario and Zelda and Samus and Kirby. You know what I mean? You've really got to like that sort of thing. And if you don't, then sorry about your luck. Because <laughs> you're not going to see Resident Evil or Halo on the, on the Wii. You know, as cool as that would be. Yeah, Sonic's another one-dimensional game, really. You know, run real fast, get rings, take on the Eggman at the end. Yeah, it did, but it um, it didn't, you know, carry the whole series. Uh, how many how many are there in the series, the Resident Evil series? There's five, right? Resident Evil 5 was... I think for the Wii. I think. See, Gallup doesn't know. He's not helping me out here. Thanks, Gallup. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I don't know much about Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... Oh, yeah, so unless you like Mario and Kirby and Zelda, Samus, you know, you're not going to see too many, you know, games like Halo or anything like that for the Wii, which is too bad. Uh, leave that to you to, to know that, Frizz. Leave it to you. Yeah. I kind of figured you'd know about that, you and your Umbrella Corporation thing. I would have just liked to see more games that you see for the PlayStation and for the Xbox. I'd like to see more games like that for the Wii, but Nintendo just doesn't do that. And that's really sad. Because it's alright to appeal to the casual gamer, but you know, if you're going to appeal to everything appeal to everybody, you know, why not just take it all the way instead of just doing it, you know, I'll just, you know, make another Mario game for the millionth time. You're not doing so oh, hot, are that. you? Yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nintendo has a bunch of different franchises that they just milk to death, but, you know, every video game system does that. I mean, God, how many Halo games are there now? Four? But, I just know. ran through all the Game Boy Advance games. Yeah, I mean, Sonic, you know, once Sega decided that, you know, hardware, you know, is just sucking too badly for them, 
they decided they were just going to focus on software and they made Sonic for everybody now. Kirby 64. Yeah. Kirby 64. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, Gallop do a Kirby game. I'd like to see Gallop do a lot of different games. Because I think Gallop could bring a lot to pretty much every game. Yeah. And the downloadable content stuff that they do now. I've heard some conflicting reports about, you know, whether that stuff's good or not. You know what I mean? So what, what say you, viewers? How's downloadable content for the next the new gen systems? How's that working out for you? I really don't know because I don't do any online stuff for my Wii. So I've heard somebody wanted me to do uh, the after years for Final Fantasy IV. I don't think I'm going to do that. Yeah, Frizzle seems to think that it's not. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's not that big a deal to me as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, Final Fantasy IV. I think the Nintendo or excuse me, Square Enix pretty much said all they needed to say with that. That brings up a good point again. Well, the problem that I always had with the PC community, particularly when they make games, is that they always seemed like they were in such a hurry to put the game out you know whether it was broken or not and waited until people screened because it was broken and then released a patch for it you know it's almost like they were asking the early people who bought the game to be unpaid beta testers you know and then they wait till they complained about something and then they release a patch for it I, I just that, that just drove me crazy I thought that was kinda silly so I stopped doing that I, I just started focusing on consoles plus PC you know games are pirated like you wouldn't believe. I suppose we, you know, surely we shouldn't be surprised about that, but people pirate computer stuff all the time. You know, I'm not gonna, I don't think any of us here can cast the first stone on that one, you know, but suffice to say that, you know, it really shouldn't surprise anybody that, you know, people are going to consoles for making games now because they were the, they're a lot harder to pirate than computers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they wouldn't go out of their way to just get something out just so they could make money, you know, and actually make sure that it was working first, then, you know, there are, there are some games that were released for the Xbox 360 that I swear to God sound like a... The, the, actually, you know, the, the Xbox 360 has to spin the disc so fast, you can actually hear it over the game. It sounds like a jet engine taking off. <laughs> It sounds it almost. I, I I was actually reading something about this on Cracked, and uh, Cracked said something to the effect that it it sounded like you know it was a wheelbarrow of pudding that the console was trying to eat through a straw. I said, yeah, that's that's about right. You know, you have to be able to be able to, the console has to be able to handle the games that are being designed for it without you know crippling it. Yeah, you know, so just yeah, you know, pirating is such a prevalent thing, you know, I I, I, I can't see, because it used to be that uh, the computer industry, you know, that used to be where all the hot titles were coming from, you know, you you were getting all the, the, the really good stuff were on, was on the computer, on the PC, like Spore, Spore was supposed to change the world, remember Spore? Oh yeah, it got, it got pirated, how many times did it get pirated in like the first 90 days, something like 1.7 million times? In the first 90 days of its release? Wow. I remember hearing that they had, like, some really obnoxious preventatives against that for people who actually legitimately bought the game, so much so that people felt encouraged to pirate it so they didn't have to deal with it. Yeah. I've heard a lot of things about that. I, I wouldn't know that. I, I, I never played Spore, but, you know, it was supposed to change the world, and it just didn't. But then again, how many times have we heard that about a game? Uh, what was what was the name of that uh, one from uh, John Romero? Daikatana, was that it? That was supposed to, you know, supposed to change the world? Because 
John Romero did Doom and he did Quake and John Romero's about to make you his bitch and all that stuff and Daikatana it was three years late and it was underwhelming even when it did get released yeah it's stuff like that you know people make promises they just can't keep in the gaming industry all the time it's too bad uh... Duke Nukem Forever, we're never going to see. <laughs> never going to see it ever. They've been promising it for like 13, 14 years now, and I, just, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, PC still has a good chunk of the best games. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to argue with you there. Um, I, would, I would rather people didn't pirate everything so much, but, you know, what are you going to do about that? Yeah, it's, it's been at E3 a number of years. Um, I'm, we're all still waiting for it, so we'll see what happens, I guess. I mean, there, I, I can't remember the last time I actually got excited about a game being released. I, I'd love to see it come out, you know, just because we've been waiting so long for it. I'd like to see what they could do with it. You know, and we can have Gallif LP that too. I don't think FPSs would be Gal's sort of thing, though. I don't, I don't know if I could help. Well, I don't typically play them, just a few exceptions. If you're going to do an FPS, I'd like to see you do something like Redneck Rampage. I've never heard of that. It's it's an FPS for Rednecks. Uh, we're talking about Duke Nukem Forever, Frizzo. About how it hasn't come out, you know. Yeah. Redneck Rampage is kind of interesting. I, I think it'd be something you'd like, Alf. I live down here in the south. Oh, well, slightly Amish said he'd be back around 8.30, right? I think so. Alright, so we probably will be seeing him sometime around 9, I think. Cool. But that's Amish for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, FPSs are all the same. Uh, I was we were watching uh, Galif and I. That is, we were watching uh, a Miss play a uh, Turok Dinosaur Hunter. That was there. He knows what I'm talking about. And we were talking about all the FPSs and all the video, all the weapons that um, that you get and how they're hard to keep track of. You know what this is called because there were so many of them. Um. Like in the like in the early '90s, there was a glut of fighting games because one fighting game gets you know gets to be successful, and then all of a sudden everybody wants a piece of the pie, and everybody wants their own fighting game so they can be successful. And every other game whenever it was released in the early '90s was a fighting game. It's not how it works, people. It just watered the whole concept down. I mean, you had Street Fighter, then you had Mortal Kombat, then you had Killer Instinct, then you had oh god. Uh, I'm drawing, fighter. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank and all the... You know, there was actually a Double Dragon. Double Dragon 4 was a Super, was a super Double Dragon. And then they would turn around and made Double Dragon 5, which was a fighting game. <laughs> which, how do you make a fighting game for Double Dragon? Yeah, yeah, that... Once again, speaks the truth. That's pretty much FPS games for you there. They're all the same. Uh, Doom, you know, you killed a bunch of demons. Uh, you had Hairtech. You had Hexen. Um, you had Quake. You had Half-Life. You know, you had Duke Nukem. You had, you know, you had Redneck Rampage. That was a pretty good one. South Park made its own FPS. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. Uh, that was pretty bad, actually. Bad isn't really freaking awful, but that's another story. Because they were they were basically when this was when South Park was huge, and you were they just slapping their face on pretty much every single piece of crap, you know, try to get to sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had ID Software, yeah. South Park also had a racing game, yeah. Yeah, South Park, you know, kind of got worn out for me real quick. 90 Software, yeah, they're, they're the ones that um, actually had John Romero from ID Software, and then 
Everybody saw Daikatana and everybody thought it was going to be the greatest thing ever and it just wasn't. Oh man. I think really the only good LP I've seen of Doom was the one that Kawadi did about a year ago. So I'm just going on an oratorical rant about... Is face in the box? Um, face in the box? I said with his face. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was the video I did. Oh, yes, that's right, yes. I thought that was kind of awesome. It was your idea. <laughs> I saw it in the comments, and I was like, I can do that. Yeah, so, so I would love to see, you know, Kawadi body's face in the, in the status bar. Oh yes, I remember that, yes. I think I favorited that video. Oh. No, oh, everybody pissed me off back then. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm not exactly the most even-headed person, you know. I'm one of those people who just shoots off at the mouth a little more than I should when things upset me, which, you know, does happen a little too often. You know, I'm, I'm a lot... I'm I'm trying to get better at that, so I don't you know fly off the handle of people. But uh, I, I it used to be, and I was just you know, leave me alone. I mean, how many times have you seen me go off on Nimpack? I've done it two or three times now. Because Nimpack would just say something that would rub me the wrong way. Um, the last time I think Nimpack talked to me was back when uh, I was doing the Super Mario 64 LP, and yeah, he yeah. was he was talking to me when I was doing Wet Dry World. I never have trouble, you know, with this thing, you know, because the controls are, you know, blah, 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 blah. I said, thanks you for telling me for that. Thanks for telling me that, Professor. You know, I'm glad you're here to tell me these things. I said, I'm sorry. And then I, I haven't heard anything from him since. At least until Apple Axe 51, I think he, you know, made a comment on this. I was... Why did I watch this? Or I can... Yeah, why, why did I, I watch this? I can live by myself. Yeah. Something. Yeah. You know? See, Gallup knows this. Gallup watches my stuff. I don't know why Gallup watches my stuff. He can do so much better, but... Hey, I don't know why, you know, Nimpak is, I, I, I just don't think he likes the fact that I started getting a little coarser in what I was talking about over the course of my commentary, but you know, I just started relaxing and, you know, doing what I do naturally. You know, it's all I can do, man. You know, I'd be, you know, uptight for so long, you know, it just doesn't work for me. I mean, Gallif, Gallif has, you know, the skill that I just don't. So I have to make up for it by selling up with the commentary. You know, the commentary is what keep, keep, keeps people coming back to my videos, from what I understand. Gallif actually has, you know, decent skill at these things. I don't. <laughs> I don't pretend to, either. Ooga booga, ooga booga. Gallif you know, is... I sometimes have more trouble with the commentary. Sometimes I get it, like when I did Super Mario RPG, I didn't have much of a problem coming up with things to say, but then... Other times I draw rant blanks a lot. Yeah, there's no problem with that. You know, some people can do the commentary, some people can't. You know, I'd, I'd rather, you know, just 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 with the stuff that you do, Galf. You know, you shouldn't be worrying about commentary at all. You know, the the, the gameplay is enough for people. But you know, when you when you suck at games like me, you know, you have to pretty much be able to talk. And if you can't talk, then why is there why are we watching this crap? Yeah, so, yeah, my commentary is, is the only thing, you know, carrying my LPs. I'm sure, you know, if you were to ask, you know, if you were to ask, like, uh, Thera or Sation or, or a Miss, you know, they'd all tell you, yeah, what are you talking about? You know, Apple, you're great. Yeah, 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 whatever. My commentary is, you know, why people watch. I know that. I freely admit that. And I'm not afraid to say that either, you know, because the stuff I do is just awful otherwise. Because I cheat all the time. I cheat all the time, I use save states all the time, you know. You know, people who actually have skill don't have to do those sorts of things. So, I just have fun with it, you know. Because I'm never going to be, you know, Skip Rogers, world video game champion. <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about when I say Skip Rogers, world video game champion, do a search for it on YouTube. You'll see. <laughs> it's It's bad. I'll go. Skip tips. Yeah, I'll, I'll go find. Uh, I'll go find the links that uh, so you can actually watch the videos, and uh, you'll laugh because a lot of his information is just wrong. Nine junior villains. <laughs> yeah, when there's only eight for Mega Man Two. 
Hey, don't feel bad. No one watches my stuff either. I have 400 some odd subscribers. I think maybe 20 or 30 will watch any given video I do. So even having the subscribers means nothing. Gallup's getting a lot more attention now that he's, you know, in, in CLG as opposed to when he when before he wasn't. He's gotten a lot more subscribers now. You know, and you know, he's agonizing over whether or not he should be talking in his videos. I I think the stuff he does is great regardless. I like it when he talks. I like doing it, it's just that sometimes it seems to work well and sometimes it doesn't. That keeps changing its color. Not that that's a problem, just an observation. Well, I find that the the stuff that I do, like that one I just put up earlier today, um, the uh, World Championship ROM thing, that that actually got a pretty decent amount of views. The chat is being funky. Yes, indeed, it is. Stupid stick cam. Yeah, that's right. We should have picked a better place to host the stream, but this is the one place that we could actually explain to a miss that he could figure out, you know, on such short notice. So we ended up doing it here. Yeah. I also didn't go ahead, Gal. Realize at the time we were picking where we were going to do it that we wouldn't have to uh, be in like a group. Like I thought you would both have to be having your own streams for everyone to hear you, but then we ended up working it out without doing that. Yeah, this is the way that Thera always did it. But it's been my it's been my experience that the first video of an LP gets the most views typically, and then you know every other one after that is just kind of yeah. That first oh, video yeah. doesn't grab them then. So I did something new today just for the sake of doing it because last year in Christmas Eve I did the whole apple claws thing where I had the um, shall we say uh, the inappropriate conversation with Santa Claus, and. Um, this year I decided to do something a little different, so I whipped out the um, the thing that Mecca's having us do for the old school gaming thing, which I really should get involved in. But um, I whipped out the Nintendo World Championship ROM and actually played around with it to see how it was going to work, and I just didn't do very well at it. And people are asking me where they can find the ROMs. Like, look for it, you know? <laughs> you, you don't really need me to hold your hand and to find a ROM, do you? I mean, it's out there. I know it is because I found it easily. You know, Google is your friend on the internet for the most part. I just never understood that and why? Why? Because people always ask me, "Where do you find these things? You know, where do you find this? You know, where can I find this? Where can I find this? Where can I find this emulator? Where can I find this ROM? You know, where can I find this hack that you're talking about, Apple? Look for it, please." You know, do some of the work yourself. Wow, oh, didn't realize that would be instant death. All you have to do is just type in its name, 1990 Nintendo World Championship ROM, and I guarantee you, you'll find it. you probably find a number of sites where you can find it. It's not that hard. I passed a copy of it on to a miss. Helpless. Well, they're just lazy. They just want me to do everything for them. Oh, yeah. I think that's really more what it is than anything else. Yeah, actually. Yeah, I passed I passed a copy of it on to a miss so he could, uh, you know, if he were, they were going to put that into the, the old school gaming thing. I, I don't know if Mecca's going to do that or not, but you can't get it to the 6 minute and 21 second thing, but you can do it in 5 minutes, I guess, or 8 minutes or 9 minutes or whatever the hell. I don't know, but um, it doesn't give you exact times for whatever reason. Uh, I did it in 6 minutes and 34 seconds in the video, but you can do it in like 6 minutes and 15 seconds or, or so. They just approximate, you know, it's like 5 and 1 quarter minutes, which is 5 minutes and 15 seconds, obviously. Things like that. You know, you have to pretty much guess at how long it's going to be. And it stops, the time actually runs out with like 1 second left to go on the timer when you play it on Nestopia. So you have to kind of, mm, 
I just didn't do very well in that at all. I'm just, I'm not good at any of those games. Except for Super Mario Bros. I can do that okay, but not Rad Racer, not Tetris. Ah. But yeah, it's been an interesting day. Merry Christmas to you all, by the way. You know, because I forgot it's yes. Christmas Eve. And we're watching Gallif play, and you're listening to me rant on about stuff you didn't, couldn't possibly care any less about. I'm always I'm doing only snow and ice levels for the in spirit of the holidays, I guess. In case no, there's snow outside. Yeah. In case nobody noticed, that's what he was doing. He's playing uh, snow levels. Or ice levels. Both. Hey, you guys! Uh, so yeah, yeah. It's been a it's been an interesting day for me. I finished up my Final Fantasy LP. I'll probably start Final Fantasy two in the morning, sometime. And I also did that one just for the sake of doing it. The Apple sucks video, which I'm sure people watched because they thought somebody had hacked my account and put up a video saying that our that Apple sucks. I would have I would have been awesome, but no. It was it was me saying that about myself because it was. I put up a link to the actual event, and um, the guy uh, who won the, uh, I think he came in first place, so his name was uh, Thor Ackerman, and uh, he got to Tetris with enough time to score like 100,000 points in the time you know, that I, I scored like 2,000. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not good at Tetris at all. Because they were just, you know, dropping the blocks you know, as fast as they could, you know, rotating them and dropping them here, 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 and I'm just kind of, you know, trying to ease them down, trying to get them in there, and wow, I suck. <laughs> so that's where the title came from, Apple Sucks, because he does, when it comes to Tetris and Rad Racer. Wait a minute, Gal, there's no snow here. <laughs> I needed to power up. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you. That's awesome. So, um, what haven't we talked about yet? We talked about know. we talked about Mega Man. Talked about Final Fantasy, Mario, and Sonic, and first-person shooters. I mean, we talked about a bunch of different types of video games. Um, What's everybody doing for Christmas? How's that? What's Gallif doing for Christmas? I'm well, just gonna open presents, hang out with my family, and maybe do some whatever stuff we can think of to do that might be fun. Awesome. Awesome. Not I'd, gonna be on the internet at all tomorrow, probably. Yeah, I'd tell you what I'm gonna be doing, but it'll depress the living hell out of all of you because I'm not doing a thing. Oh. I'm not doing anything with anybody. I'm going to be hanging around all by myself all day. But then again, I am going to be doing Final Fantasy 2 probably, so it's all good. Um, well, yeah, actually, I don't have anything planned. Um, I never do. Christmas is just like any other day for me, just like my birthday. I don't really, you know, have any reason to celebrate it. I'm not a bah humbug type of guy, and I'm not, you know, scrooging it or anything, but I'm just, you know, saying, hmm, whatever, Christmas, big deal. Enjoy yourselves, but I'll be, you know, doing LPs. King Didi. I thought he was your enemy. Why are you hopping on his back? Oh, yeah. Uh, he ends up being your ally early on in this game because you kind of save him in his butt, basically. Uh -huh. He gets possessed, and you rescue him by beating the crap out of him until he's not possessed anymore. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yeah, my family all lived, they all lived down in Tennessee. And we're, we're going to get some, uh, they tell me they're going to get some pics of my family. My aunts and uncles are down there, so they're going to put them on Facebook so I can, you know, ridicule them mercilessly. So I said, alright, yeah. Yeah, but I'm pretty much just going to be laying low tomorrow and, you know, doing some recording. That's probably about it. I have family about 20 minutes away, but, yeah, I don't really care much for them. But, uh, my mom's side of the family all live down in Tennessee. 
So yeah, Kirby, I'm just gonna throw your ass in the hole. <laughs> so we're slightly. When you catch up to it, I just got the most awesome, in my opinion, ability in this game. Yeah. So where is slightly Kirby? I mean, slightly Amish. Where is he? Leaked. But that's okay. He's probably not gonna be coming back anytime to do. Yeah, I'll be doing Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 2 and I will not be enjoying it at all. So I'm going to be having some fun with it, or at least trying to. Gallif doesn't like Final Fantasy 2. I don't like Final Fantasy 2. It's just... I can't believe there are people that do like it. Yeah, it's 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 just not not well done. That's really not having much luck with the chat. Oh, that sucks. Well, hyper, you'll get to see it. I don't know when it's going to start going up. Um. I'll start recording it probably tomorrow. I don't know when it's going to start going up. Maybe, I don't know, Sunday or Monday. One of the two. I'm, I'm off until Tuesday, so it'll go up sometime. If the chat's like, uh, keeps pulling itself back up, basically, I think I had it fix itself once just by kind of dragging it all the way up at the top and then just kind of trying to leave it alone, stop trying to get it to go down, and it eventually went back down where it should be on its own. Or maybe it's just not updating for him like it should be. And it's not, you know, just all the stuff that's being chatted, you know, he's not seeing until he refreshes. That happens to me every now and then. Stickum's just not a great place to stream. It's but you know, it's where we all went. You know, what are you gonna do? doesn't want to auto scroll, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about basically. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 kind of poopy when it comes to when it comes to uh, streaming here, but you know, it, it's an easy place to come stream. For the really all I can do. Galif is enjoying himself. You can tell. All he has to do is just play and keep his mouth shut, and Apple will just bore the living hell out of everybody. Uh, but I don't think you are. Like I said, I'm I'm kind of the motor mouth when you get me going, you know. So I'll just keep yakking. Don't you 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 played a Kirby Superstar, right, Gallif? You know, and when you have a helper and you grab some food and then you French kiss your uh, helper and feed him that way. Isn't that kind of weird? It's almost like a, a yeah. it's almost like a bird feeding yeah, that, a baby. I don't get that. That's just weird to watch. It's just so out of place in a kid's game. That's, that's, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's all good, you know. That that you know they couldn't have thought thought of a different way to feed you know your helper. You know you have to. Stick your little Kirby tongue down down their throat. You know, it's 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 just weird. Yeah, I'm I'm just you know trying to fill the silence. You know, if I had a miss here, you know, you know he's off. You know, eating with his uh, female, as he calls her, in opening presents, I guess. So I'm just trying to trying to keep myself entertained by just yapping. Yeah, he's a lot more talkative than I am. Most people are. Yeah. I'm pretty quiet, you know, but but you know sometimes I just start yakking for the hell of it. Um, let's see, uh, Kirby, Kirby Superstar. Um, I guess uh, I guess they're doing it over on uh, Low Bias, aren't they? Kirby Superstar. Oh, are they? I guess. You know they'll probably do it better than I did, and that's for sure. Um, you'd have to talk with Gallif about that, Hyper. He's the one hosting. About what now? He wants to know um, CLG, CLG members for guest commentary. 
Yeah, no, yeah, just CLG. Yeah, he's the one hosting. Uh, it has nothing to do with me. He's the one hosting this call. And he's having me talk on his behalf. Yeah, if, if they're doing it over there, you know, they could probably do it a whole hell of a lot better than I did. Because I, I just kind of fudged my way through it, really. What is that? What's what? That thing you're fighting there. Oh, the giant robot. I don't know. Yeah. So Kirby's all Darth Maul in the thing? Yeah. That's awesome. That is my favorite ability in the game. I always liked having the hammer from Kirby Superstar. And I liked I liked Milky Way Wishes from Kirby Superstar because you got to keep all the abilities permanently. Yeah. That's awesome. Darth Kirby. Darth Puff. <laughs> I don't know what she's called. Darth Luff. Darth Luff. Darth Black Mage. Darth Marshmallow. <laughs> wow. Ugh. This is a strange line of conversation. Let's see here. Um. Well, if you were going to be a member of Organization 13, you'd have to anagram your name and add an X. Yep. So G A L U F with an X. Uh, How about Golfax? <laughs> Sounds like a compounding of like gold and fax. Sounds like a fax to the golf. Sounds like a laxative. <laughs> That's not a good name. Golfax. It, it, it sounds too much like X lax for my taste. I have to. Anagram those a little better. And Dolcalax? Yeah, Dolcalax. Gulfax. Wow. Uh. So, what are we doing here? Bomberman 64. Bomberman 64. Ask your doctor if Gulfax is right for you. Oh, man. <laughs> Luxfag? No, I don't think that's going to work either. No, thank you. <laughs> you think Gallop's, Gallop's name is hard to anagram? Try mine. I have too many vowels. The funny thing is we're having trouble coming up with anagrams of our name and with uh, the actual members in the Kingdom Hearts game. I remember there was a thing where it was kind of like people were trying to figure out what their original names were and some of them some of those were kind of hard to figure out from what the anagram was yeah so, like axel is ale axel is lee l-e-a oh that's right lee e -E. yeah and Syx is isa but for like the first six it's like how would you even figure that out I mean, they didn't come right out and tell you you know because uh the first one uh Zemnis is ansem of course but then you have yeah. uh, Brag for Zigbar, Dylan for Zaldan, um, Evan for Vexen, Alias for Lexius, and Ienzo for Zexion. How are you supposed to know those things? Ienzo, yeah. Ienzo, yeah. And uh, number nine is Demix. What would that one be? M Y E D? Mead? Luxord would be like. Dulor or something like that. Marluxia would be... I don't know. Larxene would probably be like Rolina or something like that. That sounds good. And Roxas, of course, Larxene was Sora. would be the Wendy's commercial lady. Yeah. Yeah, because she is a Wendy's commercial lady. I think, that what they, I think what they did was they just came up with the names first. And then they came up with the real names afterward. Yeah. Square Enix logic is a, something called a hoxy, oxymoron hyper. Uh. 
So, what are you doing here in Bomberman? I just went away. I totally didn't have to go. Uh, hey, all, all you have to do is basically find the level exit. Sometimes there's some twists to what you have to do. I think in this stage, I just have to find a switch and step on it. Awesome. There's another game I'd like to see ULP for the PlayStation. It's called Croc. Oh, yeah, I remember a friend had that, and I saw it, but I never... I saw a little bit of it, but I didn't play it or see much more of it after that. Yeah. That's uh, spelled C-R-O-C, by the way, for anyone who's interested in that. It's a goofy game. It's a kid's game. Never quite could figured out how to finish the last boss or anything like that, but it was an interesting game. Front. Oh, you yeah, uh, you left and now you're back. Okay. The thing with one of the things with this Barman sixty four. If you haven't seen it already, you'll see me find like a gold card, which uh, there's five of those in every level. I think three of them are hidden. One of them is for completing the stage within a certain amount of time and. Uh, I for I forget what what some of, what some of the requirements are. Is is that a, t a score or is that time that up there in the upper left? Yeah, that's time. And oh, okay. And when it's turn when it turns red, uh, you have used too much time, and you're not going to get a gold card when you finish the stage anymore. Awesome. Hmm. If you collect, ooh ah eh eh ooh ah ah ooh ah, I told the witch doctor I was in love with you. There you go again, Gallif, moving your vowels again. <laughs> I'm sorry, my friend. I could not understand a single word you just said there. Because all I heard was ah, ooh, ah, e, ah, oh, ah, ah, e, ah. That's all right, man. You're playing. I'll, I'll, I'll yak. Nobody can hear and understand what I'm saying either. They'll, they'll see it when I post the videos. But other than that, jeez. Now Gallop has just completely left me alone to speak all by myself. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you're you're kinda you're kinda with me. But uh your quality of your speaking voice just isn't that great. It's not transmitting that well. You should look into that, sir, before I kick you in the head. <laughs> that's Skype send, I think. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't do much. I know. Well, I had to give you a hard time about that. And it's 9 o'clock, and a miss is not back yet. So much for being here by 11.30, or 8.30. But it's all right, as long as I can hear what you're saying. Barely. Yeah, he, he's, he's here because he didn't log off the chat, but I'm sure he's somewhere around. Hey, this video's you know stretched longer than the other one did, and it hasn't crashed yet, so I think we're okay. Awesome. So we're going to, um, however much longer this goes, you know, I'll I'll just uh, I'll just keep recording here. I'm going to end this one and then start another one up right away. So I'm going to stop this one. So bye.